All right, in this section, we're going to be looking at doing the same things we did in the last section, except this time we're going to be dealing with uh, larger collections of data. So the first thing I want to do is grab one of the problems out of the homework for the uh, out of the homework and examine it. All right, here's problem number six. I'm going to talk about it in a couple of ways. First, let me talk about some of the things that are easiest to do when the data is presented like this. When the data is like this, it's easy to find things like the median, for example. Even though we're told there's a hundred pieces of data, I would still go and count. If you'll notice, there's 10 across and there's 10 vertically. So <clears throat> 10 by 10 is a hundred. And when I look, if I go across each row, there's 1 to 10, uh, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 56. Now, when you have 100 items, there's no middle piece of data. Like item 51 is not the middle piece of data. Items 50 and 51 are the two middle pieces of data. So let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. There, see that, that guy right here is the 50th item. And this guy right here is item number 51. 50th and 51. So the median of those two, we take 55 plus 56 divided by 2, and we get 55.5. So the median is really easy to tell here, as is the range. The range, all we do is take our, our highest value, 63, and subtract our lowest value, 51, and that's 12. And then the mid-range. The mid-range is going to be uh, these are all equal to that, so let me put equals. The mid-range, we take our highest, which is 63, and our lowest, which is 51, and divide it by 2. Uh, what is that? 114 over 2, so that is 57. And so those were easy to do. And those are also easy to do even if we put it in grouped format. Now what's not so easy to do from this is to try to get the mean and standard deviation because you would have to enter in all of this data to do it. So to try to make things a little bit simpler, we've come up with something called grouped data. Let me move this up a little bit. So instead of writing everything down, here's what I do. I make a table and I'll have my data value. That'll be my X. And then since, if you'll notice, we have 100 pieces of data, 51 to 63. That means there's a lot of repeats. So let me put what's called the frequency. This is the number of times a data value occurs. So we'll call it by the letter F. And let me go ahead and put our numbers in. So I'll start with 51, which you see happens three times. Then I'll move on to 52 and count how many times that happens. That's 7 plus 7 more is 14. Moving on, uh, 53 occurs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. 54 occurs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times. 55 occurs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 10 is a, for a total of 15. 56 and 57 each appear only once. 58 occurs a bunch of times. I've got 8 plus 6 more for 14. 
59 occurs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 times. And 60, 60, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. 60 occurred 7 times. 61 occurs 5 times. 62 looks like it only occurs 3 times. And then finally, 63 occurs seven times. Now it's easy when you're looking at a lot of data to forget what you're looking at and, and lose track. So let me add these all up. The total number of frequencies should add up to be a hundred. So let's just do a quick add of them. 3, 17, 23, 34, 49, 50, 51. 65, 77, 84, 89. It looks like I only have 99. What happened? Now it looks like I found my mistake here. That was a 7 and that makes that 100. Now you're going to want to make yourself another column here and that's F times X. This is where I multiply the two of them to get this one here. And so let's see what we have. 51 times 3 is 153. Uh, 52 times 14 is 728. Uh, 53 times 7 is 371. 54 times 11 is 594. 55 times 15 is 825. 56 times 1, well that's 56. The next one's easy too, 57. And then 58 times 14 is 812. Uh, 59 times 12 is 708. Uh, 60 times 7 is 420. 61 times 5, 305. 62 times 3 is 186. 63 times 7 is 441. And if I add up all of these, I get 5656. Five, six. Now we're ready for a definition. For grouped data, we calculate the mean as the sum of the f times x's divided by the sum of the f's. So in this case, that's 5656 divided by 100. And so that's 56.56. Now I want you to know something. That's directly from the group data. If I were to try to figure out this mean by adding up all the numbers in that table, I would have started with 51. And how many times would I have put it? Three times. And then I would have added with 52. I don't know how many times, but then I would have gotten all the way to 63, and I don't know how many times that was, but there was a bunch of them. We'll just end it there. And then I would have had to divide all of that over 100. So you can see that having it in the table is much more efficient than trying to do it this way. This would be terrible. Plus, this would be rife with errors because there's no way you'd be able to put in all of those digits without making some kind of an error along the way. So anyways, we have that. Now, let me come back for a minute and talk about some other things before I do the standard deviation. I wanted you to see how you can find the mode is really easy. All you have to do is look at the biggest number here, and this tells you 55 occurred 15 times. So the mode 
equals 55. The median is a little tougher to tell from here, but you just have to keep track of how many numbers you've used up so far. For example, if I were to do like an accumulative column here for these frequencies, by the time I was done with 51, I would have had 3. And then by the time I was done with 52, I would have had 17. I'm just adding them as I go along. By the time I'm done with 53, I have 24, 35, 50. Stop right there. I know that to find the median, I want items 51 and 52. And item 51 is the last of the 55s. Then item 56 is the 51st first data value. So that's how you can tell where the median is on this table. I don't need the cumulative for anything else. Now let's go ahead and talk about the standard deviation. Just like the mean, if I wanted to, I could write a gargantuan uh, formula for this standard deviation, but it's much easier to do when it's in the frequency table format. So let's go ahead and write it. Here we're going to do f times x minus x bar squared all over the sum of the f's, but then you subtract 1. So I'm going to have to increase this table, or I'm going to have to do some things with this table in order to make use of this formula. All right, I put it back here. What I want to do is increase this table a little bit. What I want to do is do x minus x bar. Remember that was x bar was 56.56. .56. Then I want to square it. And then whatever that is, I want to multiply by their frequency. So this will allow me to fill out this table here because I need to get, I need to sum up this column. That's the one that I need. I already know that the sum of the F's is 100. So I know that this denominator is 99. I've already got all that. Let's go ahead and do this stuff. X minus X bar and then square it and then this stuff. I'll go ahead and just start filling out the table, but I'll do it in super fast speed so that you're not as bored. All right, I've got everything I need for my computations. Let's go ahead and plug them in. <clears throat> so my standard deviation is the square root of the sum of the f times x minus x bar squared all over the sum of the f's minus 1. Just to reiterate the formula, let me go ahead and put what we've got in that last column. I got 1242.64. And then in the denominator, I have 100 minus 1. One last step, and then I'll put the calculator to it. One two four two point sixty four divided by 99. And let's see what we get. I'll report my answers to three decimal places. So here I get 3.543. All right, now what I would like to do is redo the last example, but let the calculator do everything. So let's redo 
the last example but let the calculator do it all. All right, so what I'm going to have to do then is grab my data again. There it is. Let's see, hopefully I didn't go over top of any of my stuff. Now, the calculator makes this so easy that you're going to wonder why I showed you to do that other stuff in the first place. Well, you should know how to do it. Remember to enter data into this calculator, hit stat, edit, that's where we want to be. And now, when you're here, we can delete all of that data from the left. I'll just keep hitting the delete button until it's completely gone. Move over to the right and delete as well. Now, if you only have a, people, pe a couple of pieces of data in there, you can just overwrite it because what I have here is probably more uh, than just a few pieces of data. So let me get my X values in. Now move over to the next column and put in your frequency list. So this is the number of times each of those data values occurs. All right, it looks like I got all my data in. Now, in order to get all the stuff that we want, go back to your stat menu and then go over to calc. All you have to do is enter your way through now because we want to be on one variable statistics. Uh, now, my list, of data values was in L1. So to change this, we have to click second and then one because L1 is above it. Let me enter. Now I put my frequency list in L2, so I'll put second over number two will tell me L2. Now I'll enter my way through. And there we have our X bar is the 5656. The standard deviation is given there too. Don't forget to look for S sub X, not the sigma one. So we have 3.543. While I'm here, you can even tell the median from here. So if I look, the median is in here. Click uh, here. Scroll down. There's more. That little down arrow means there's more stuff down there. N equals 100 means that. Uh, the sum of our frequencies added up to 100. That's good. So let me go down here. My minimum value is 30, or 51. Uh, quartile 1 is 54. The median is 55.5, like I said before. I don't know if it tells mode from there, but mode is pretty easy to tell just by looking at this. So I don't think we have to do mode, but we'll see if what it has in here. Uh, Q3, it's got the max. So you can take the max minus the min yourself to get its range. And that's it. So it doesn't give us the range. It doesn't explicitly give us the range. And it doesn't explicitly give us the mid-range either. But that's easy enough also. Uh, the range and the mid-range have got to be the two easiest computations of them all. All right, well, we're gonna, I'm going to redo the example, but with this more simple calculator. So remember, to get your calculator in stats mode, the thing that you want to click is right above the data button. See that stat up there, that blue stat? That's what you want to activate. So you hit second, and then you hit your data. And it'll ask you for one bar or two bar. We want one bar. So let me hit equals. And we're ready to roll. Now all we have to start doing is putting in our data. So you click your data button and it will ask you for X1. Refer to the table that I just worked on because I can't show them at the same time as I'm working on this. We had a data value of 51. So I'm putting that in there. Now if you hit your down arrow one time, it'll ask you for the frequency. So you can put the number three. and then arrow down. Don't hit enter or you're gonna screw things up. Then we had 52, 
And that 52, I, I want to press enter so bad. That 52 occurred 14 times. And then X3 was 53. And that occurred, 53 occurred seven times. 54 occurred 11 times. Sixty-three occurred seven times. So we've got our numbers in. Now you can hit enter if you feel like it, just to, so you're done. Now we're ready to get our data, or our statistics from all that. So, well, what you want to do is actually click on the data button. Takes a few seconds to calc. And actually... I made a mistake. I clicked stat bar. That's my bad. All right. So our N is 100 like we knew. Now let's move over. There's my mean. There's my standard deviation. I don't care about sigma X. We may at one point care about the sum of the X values, which was 5656. Five, five, and the sum of the X squareds. They give that as well. Those are useful in some things as well. Now, notice that it doesn't give you the range. It doesn't give you the mode. It doesn't give you the median. So all those things you're going to have to do uh, in a different way than using the calculator. That's just because these calculators don't do as much as the graphing calculators. All right, now that all the calculators have been taken care of, let's do some more examples just to make sure you know how to enter the data and everything. Compute. The mode. Median. Mid-range. mean, range, and the standard deviation, for the following frequency distribution. So for my data, I have negative 8, negative 3, negative 1, 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 10. And the frequency, I have 21, 78, 99, 71, 80, 90. 76, 49, and 13. I'm going to stop here for just one moment. One thing you should, I, I didn't mention before, <clears throat> this table that I'm drawing here is called the frequency distribution. You list the data value with its frequency, and it tells you how the frequencies are divided up among each of the data values. So that's all there is to it. Now, let me go ahead and get some of my other, inf the, the easiest information to get right off the bat. For one, the pieces of data, well, I don't have that. I should probably add those all up and find out what they are in order to do most of most anything. But let's start with the mode and see if that's easy. That's usually really easy to do. And all I have to do here is see that negative one occurs 99 times and that's the most so my mode is negative one now i'll take care of the mean and the standard deviation 
and the median later on. The n I'll also take care of later on when my calculator does it for me, so we'll have that waiting for us. Uh, Mid-range, that one shouldn't be too bad. Let's take a look. The highest data value is 10 plus negative 8 over 2. That is equal to 2 over 2. Well, the mid-range is equal to 1. The range is a little bit different. Here, the range, we take the largest minus the lowest, and here we get 18. Now let me get these into my calculator. Let me go back to stat, edit, and I'll start writing over this. I don't have as much data as last time, so I'm going to delete the data that's in there. Only up to a point that I can overwrite it with the data, the new data that I had. My first one was negative 8. Then I have negative 3. Then I have negative 1. Then it looks like 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 10. Now let me go to the other one, and I'll just start deleting. Uh, oh, but if you go up too high, it... it goes back around I guess so I can go back there around the other way all right then my frequency 21 78 <clears throat> 99 71 uh, 80 90 76 49, 13, and that is all my data. Then to get the rest of my uh, stats that I want, we click Stat, Calc, One Variable Stats. I've got my list in the right spot and my frequency list in the right spot, so let's go ahead and calculate. It looks like my N is 577, and then for the mean, let's see what it gave me for that. That is 1.355, and the standard deviation, remember, S sub X, 3.684. I think the only thing I've forgotten is the median. I don't think I've put it in here. I'll do it on the calculator in a second. But we know there's 577 pieces of data. That's an odd number. The, the, so if I take 577 and divide it by 2, what do I get? Uh, 577... Here I get 288.5. That means that the middle number, the middle, uh, I don't know what to call it, the middle position, that's what we want, position, is 289. So I need to look for whatever number here gets me to 289 in this list. So I know negative 8 carries me 21 times and a negative 3, 78 times. I got to figure it out until I get to 289. So let's add these up as I go along. I'm going to do what's a, a, like I did before, a sort of a cumulative. So inside of here, I'm going to do a little, a little cumulative where I'm adding up these. So I'll start at 21 and then I'll add the 78. That'll be 99. 
then I'll add the 99 to the 99 will give me 198 and then 269 now remember I'm looking for position 289 now this by the time I do this now I'm at 349 that means inside of here we have 21 negative eights in a row followed by 78 negative threes so we have a total of 99 numbers so far then we have 71 zeros in a row now we're or was it negative ones then we had 99 negative ones in a row so now we're at 198 data values then we have 71 zeros in a row so now we're at 269 data values and now for data values 270 through 349 the number two occurs 80 times that means the number two is in position 289 so if you want x sub 289 is the number two now if we go to my calculator let's take a look and see what it says for that i can go back to my stat calc because i know it has it in there it has it click my way through this and you down arrow see the median is two now occasionally we have so much data or the data is so difficult to organize that the frequency distribution itself won't even be enough for us it, the data is too much even to throw into one of those tables so let me show you as an example what i'm talking about all right the following table lists the high temperatures for Cleveland, Ohio, for every day for a full year. So what they have is arranged the tables in the following manner. We have the temperatures, let's put them over here, T-E-M-P. And now instead of giving all of the possible temperatures, I'm going to give a range of temperatures, say from negative 30 degrees through negative 20 degrees of course these are in Fahrenheit and then the number of days for which a high temperature fell within that range there was only one day for which that range happened the reason why you might do this is you could have individually hundreds of high temperatures um, and especially if you go into decimals you might it might be impossible to represent the data because you might have only one day for every single temperature. You might have 365 different temperatures and it wouldn't be contained well in any table. So it's better for examples like this to catch the various numbers inside of an interval like I'm doing here. So what you wanna do though, is you wanna put these into classes and you wanna make sure that each of the classes is the correct or the same size. So here I went from negative 30 degrees to negative 21 degrees, and then I'll go from negative 20 degrees to negative 11 degrees. Two days for that. And then we have negative 10 degrees to negative 1 degree. Five days for that. And then we have zero degrees to 10 degrees, eight days. All right, well, you can continue these. Notice that these all end in a zero here. Um, so I should have probably changed that to a nine. Let me check my lengths here. From 30, 30 minus negative 21 is actually nine. So these aren't 10, they're nine. 
All right, well, then I have this correct, I guess. Let's see, then I'm going to go um, 10 degrees to 19 degrees. Well, I don't know, if you're thinking about integers, 10, that is actually 10 whole numbers. 10 to 19 is 10 whole numbers, so 20. Now, one thing you want to make sure is that the days add up to 365. Now, since we have a range of temperatures here, each of these, as I refer to, is called a class, and it's of size 9. And what you do is with these, th or size 10, sorry, and what you do with each of these ranges is you choose the midpoint as sort of the, the marker for the whole interval. So let me write over here the midpoint. And for the midpoint, you're going to take the mean of negative 30 and negative 21. Let me go and do that. So if I do negative 30 plus negative 21, and I divide it by 2, I get negative 25.5. And then if you do negative 20 to negative 11, you'll find that it's negative 15.5. And you can see each of these is jumping by 10. So we've got all of our temperatures in there as well. Now, what I'm going to use this here, I'm going to choose the days to be like my frequency. So let's call that F. My midpoint will be my X. So let me put those data in to the calculator. Now I've put it in once before, so excuse me while I delete it back out so I can show you how it works. So go back to edit and go in here and delete everything that you have, or at least delete a bunch of it. it delete enough of it to where you know that you will um, be able to overwrite it with the current data. And it all adds up just right go into stat to figure out what our numbers are move over to calc one variable stats l1 is what i want for my list and now i've i've got them in the correct places this just is out of order on the page l2 is also in the right place so let me go ahead and see what we got so my mean is 50.884 And my standard deviation, S sub X, is uh, 24.305. I noticed one other thing, too. I wanted to show you N equals 365. Finally, I know that I have the right number of days for the year. One last thing before I leave this example. These are not exact. Since I was not able to give you exact temperatures and the days for which they occurred, I'm only able to give you estimates. But if you were to actually go and compute all of this by hand, like say you knew all the high temperatures for all 365 days and you crunched them all, you would be surprised how close these numbers are. I should probably put degrees because these are in degrees. All right, here's a problem from the textbook. What it does here is it gives us classes. Now, if I come back up to the previous example, these ranges that I had here, these are the classes. So basically, they'll give you the classes. We'll, we'll break the data down into inc equal increments. And what we're going to want, in order to estimate the mean and the standard deviation of this stuff, we want the midpoint of these classes. And that's just where we take the mean of 1 and 5. The mean of 1 and 5 is 3. So what I'm going to put, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Let's put it here. Let's put mid, let me just call it m.p for midpoint. And the middle point of 1 to 5 was 3. From 6 to 10 is 8. Uh, 11 to 15 is 13. Now, after a while, hopefully you can see that these are just jumping by fives, and then I can get rid of uh, bothering. 
with doing any calculations because this is obviously way easier. And that's it. All I need in my calculator are these numbers here, the MP numbers and the frequency, and it can it handle the rest. This will allow us to get a very good estimate of the mean and the standard deviation. So let's pop over to my stats. Where are you at? Edit them. Now, I don't remember if I have more or less data now. I'm just going to delete some of it just to be on the safe side until I see the end of the There we are. All right, now let me go ahead and put my numbers in. Uh, so I'm going to put my uh, X values in first. And I think that's all of it. Now hit stat, go to calc, hit one variable stats, go through that. So my X bar is 19.859. And my S, these are estimates, remember. So my X bar was 19.859 and standard deviation 10.961. The next topic is that of a weighted average. And if you remember, from the frequency distribution, we would do X bar would look like this. The sum of W times X over the sum of F's. Well, the only difference here is the sum of W dot X divided by the sum of W's. So the only thing different about what I'm about to do is that F is called W, and that is it. All right, so uh, weighted averages are good for calculating things like GPAs and whatnot. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have a frequency distribution is given. So I've got my data value. Let's call it X. And my frequency, which I'm going to call W. So for my distribution, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like so. And my frequency W's are 2, 3, 1, 4, 3. Now, of course, I'm going to want to do a WX column so that I can add them all up. And they're very easy to do here. And then if we add that all up, what do we get? That's going to equal 29. And then I need the sum of my frequencies too. And I don't know why I said def when it should be W. Sum of the W's was equal to 5, 6, 10, 13. So then what's called my weighted mean that's just this and so we get 29 over 13 that's a perfectly good answer if you want to leave it that way or you could write it as 2.231 Now, one place where they extend the idea of weights is when you do the GPA. And that's oh, the GPA is simply a weighted mean. So let's take a look at what a student got. A student's report card. And let's take a look at what they have. Here's their classes. So let's say they have biology. Advanced calculus. Eastern civilization.
physical education numerical analysis AIDS awareness so those are our classes <clears throat> We have the grades for them. So here are the grades for this student. They got a B, A, B, and then all A's, A, A, A. And the credits, the number of credits for the course, there is three for biology, three for advanced calculus, two for Eastern civilization, 0.5 five for physical education and then we have three for numerical analysis and one for AIDS awareness these credits are going to be the things that act like our weights so let's call the credits equal to W and let's add them all up so if I add I got nine ten twelve point five credits if you will this is our sum of W's this is the sum of the weights now our grade is also going to be according to a scale that goes from 0 to 4. So like a B is 3, an A is, let me put these down here, uh, 3 for a B, a 4 for an A, 3 for a B, and the A's get 4. You probably heard of these things called quality points. I don't care about that. All I care about is that I want, these are my, these are like my X values right here. So let's go ahead and put it. And these are my W's. Let me get, um, I've got my sum of the W's. Let me get my WX column then. So three times three is nine. Three times four is 12. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 0. 0.5 is 2, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 1 is 4. So what do we get for that? If we add those all up, I get 21, 27, 29, 45 total. And so when I do the GPA, this is going to be your grade point average. I'll do the sum of the WXs divided by the sum of the Ws. That's 45 divided by 12.5. And let's let the calculator do the rest. And we get 3.6.